Hey guys, Bridgette with Sandy Seed Company and we are in my cornfield, gonna give you a corn update. But before I do that, make sure you hit the like and subscribe button so you're notified anytime we put out a video. Okay, let's hop into it. So, beautiful cornfield, and interestingly enough, this section of the cornfield looks really beautiful. Then you pan that way, and everything starts to look browner and shorter. Why? Well, because I came here today and I have a major irrigation leak. There's a big old puddle where the, the something chewed on my line, I gotta fix it. I swear, it's always something. <laughs> so I wanna fix that today. But the other thing that I wanna talk to you guys about is uh, some pro tips on really how to get the biggest, most beautiful cobs of corn. How do you do that? Well, there's a little bit involved and some things you wanna make sure happen to ensure big, beautiful, pest-free, cobs of corn. Now before I get into that, let's just do a quick recap if you haven't seen our other videos on how you grow corn. Corn is a warm season crop, so it wants to be grown in warm soil after any frost has, has, is going to happen in warm soil in the spring through the summer. It needs to be grown in blocks to ensure pollination, and you need to make sure that there is some type of irrigation or you're watering well to get nice, big, tall um, stalks of corn and corn cobs. So that's the, the quick, the down and dirty on how to grow corn. Now a pro tip that really will make a big difference in making sure you have worm-free corn cobs is knowing how to manage those insects. So right now we've got a stock of corn and we have our tassels up top, which is where the pollen comes from. The pollen falls down onto these silks. You can actually see that it's covered in, in pollen and it travels into the, the cob and it fills up a, each individual kernel. And that kernel swells up to make the corn cob that we love. Now, if you've grown corn before and you go to peel it back, there are a bunch of kernels missing and worms that are going inside there and eating it. Well, it's because you didn't manage the uh, insect population when it was critical. So what happens is beautiful white butterflies and moss fly around here. They land on these silks they lay their eggs and then the worms go into the corn cob and eat the succulent, delicious, sugary kernels that are in there. How do you prevent that from happening? Well, there's a very simple way that you can do it, an organic way that you can do it. There's a product called BT. It stands for bacterial thorogenesis. It is a naturally occurring bacteria in the soil. They bottle it up and you can use it to manage specifically caterpillars. Now, as I say, when you're using any insecticide, pesticide, herbicide, any chemical in the garden, period, organic or otherwise, read the instructions on the back, fully understand the product that you're using and the insect that it is targeting. BT specifically targets leaf-eating caterpillars or caterpillars in, on your crops. So when your corn is at this stage, you can actually spray it with BT, making sure you hit the uh, silks, and that's going to ensure that those caterpillars perish and don't have time to eat the amazing kernels that are on the cob. That's really important, and we actually learned that the hard way. The first year growing out here, we had an amazing patch of sweet corn. Every single cob, you peeled it back and there was a worm inside. It's not the end of the at the end of the world, you can absolutely still eat those. It just it makes not as pretty of cobs. And if you are a market grower, you really want to avoid that because consumers want corn cobs that are full, right? They're buying a corn cob, they want every single kernel. So that's pro tip number one. The other thing that has to happen at this stage of growth is adequate pollination. We have a really rad video that goes into that in depth, but I just want to touch on it briefly. So there is powder-like, very tiny, tiny pollen that falls from here. And you actually, you can see it, see that? little bit of powder, that's pollen. And the pollen falls and you want it to hit the silks. That's very important. If you were to plant corn in just a few stalks, what is likely to happen is you won't get good pollination, which means you won't get a big full cob of corn. You'll have pieces missing or only half of it will be developed. That's because not enough pollen fell onto the silks to fill up that corn cob. So there's a couple things you can do. You can plant in really big blocks like this, which ensure that the pollen is going to move across this field and fall onto the plants. You also can self-pollinate, and that's a very simple process of coming in and, and shaking it and making sure that you see pollen falling down 
on the silks. If you live in a really, really windy area, sometimes the pollen can blow right past the crop. If that's the case, you actually can cut this off and go in and you can actually just put it on top of the silks. That'll ensure that the, that the pollen has hit it, that you're gonna get full heads of corn. Now this is our beautiful glass gem popcorn. So this will continue growing for, we're gonna leave this in the ground for probably another month. Uh, maybe even longer and then we will harvest it that seed will get processed and then that's what goes in the packets that get sold to you guys so that's the down and dirty quick of how you grow corn with some two essential pro tips of common mistakes people make don't make that mistake in your corn patch this year make sure you ensure good pollination and if you've had an issue with caterpillars and worms inside your corn cobs use a product an organic product like BT that is specifically targeted towards those insects to manage it from the very beginning.